Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tato katoa. Uh, he kai mahi aho na tahoro nukorangi. Uh, he karanga ho um, uh, kaupapa a iwi aho. Uh, ko Kate Davies um, aho. Um, I'm a social scientist at Niwa, um, and I am, have had the privilege to work with a wide number of people on the research that I'm going to talk about today. Um, so thank you to all of you. Many of you are actually in this room right now. Um, so thanks for your contribution so far. Um, my colleague Gemma Cousins from MFE, um, based here in Wellington, is actually going to um, help me out with the first portion of the talk. So um, I'd like to welcome her up now. Uh, so in August 2016, um, the challenge held a Sustainable Seas workshop um, with various stakeholders and Maori um, representatives, um, and that revealed that a shared vision, we wanted a shared vision um, and the capacity to work across institutions and a set of national scale guidelines or principles. Um, these were identified as things that were really needed to address cumulative effects in New Zealand. Um, and the workshop really highlighted the unique opportunity that the challenge provides to bring together different stakeholders and iwi and do something bigger than anyone alone. Um, the workshop offered some great insights into the issues with cumulative effects management in New Zealand, but I thought more could be done. So um, with speaking with Kate and Karen and other Sustainable Seas researchers, we co-developed the project that we're talking to you about today. So there are now about 15 organizations working in partnership to deliver this research, which aims to deliver a more cohesive approach to cumulative effects across a range of institutions. Those research partners include representatives from central and regional government, Maori consultancies and trusts, and industry. And the range of expertise ranges from marine ecology and geography to policy implementation and statistical modeling. So we're not under any illusions that finding a solution that better enables us to identify and manage for cumulative effects will be easy. It is challenging, and as you've already heard, the biophysical science associated with understanding how cumulative effects and tipping points work is highly complex. Um, and not surprisingly, so are the management and governance arrangements associated with cumulative effects. So coastal and marine management in New Zealand is covered by 25 statutes governed by 14 agencies across seven spatial jurisdictions. Uh, and while cumulative effects is referred to in several of the main statutes, the fragmented approach to resource management and environmental protection makes it challenging to achieve proper cumulative effects management. So the partners and participants involved in this project do recognize that better integration is needed and see value in streamlining cumulative effect management processes. But there are a lot of hindering factors constraining this, and Kate's going to talk a bit more about that in a minute. However, we're at least all on the same page that we need a more strategic approach that can consider and, where possible, align interests and goals across multiple scales and sectors. So this project has seen challenge researchers operating as knowledge brokers or boundary spanners among the institutions that are involved in cumulative effects management. And partners from the various organizations have contributed to the development of the research design, data collection, and importantly, are positioned to implement and expand on the outcomes of this research. So I'll just hand back over to Kate to get into the details of it. So um, the partners in this project have also agreed that in order to address cumulative effects, as you've already heard from several other speakers, um, the, uh, an approach that stretches from Q to Kitai or mountains to seas um, is, is necessary. Um, so this is a, originally a Maori concept that emphasizes the interconnectedness of ecosystems, um, inclusive of people. And it's also an approach that is somewhat supported by the structure of the uh, Resource Management Act. 
Um, the concept aligns with the commitment to ecosystem-based management that is a part of the Sustainable Seas National Science Challenge. Um, and because EBM emphasizes the maintenance of ecosystems and human well-being over sectoral management, um, effective cumulative effects management is going to be an essential part of any implementation of EBM. Um, and, and that, I think, has been, again, also emphasized quite extensively at the conference so far. Oop, I'm going the wrong way. Um, so how are we going to uh, go about developing a cumulative effects approach? Um, basically what we've done so far is conduct some, some reviews of the literature, um, legislation and case law. Um, we've, we've done some extensive reviewing of um, current practice and future possibilities with uh, focus groups, with partners and, and other participants as well. So um, for, for social scientists, this is a very large number of focus groups and participants. So we're very proud um, that we've had such a committed, um, uh, willing participants in the project so far. Um, those, the participants have operated across multiple sectors and um, we've had land-based input as well. Um, so farming and forestry have participated in, in focus groups. Um, it's not just been the marine sector. Um, and from there, we've been able to develop a framework um, that's basically just a, a very much a draft still um, for thinking through cumulative effects um, management approaches um, and, and possible principles. And we'll be testing that framework at a workshop um, in December here in Wellington. So in focus group interviews, um, we're using a modified DIPSER framework or driver's pressure state impact response framework. Some of you may have seen something like this before, some of you may not. Um, but essentially, the goal is to start to understand the connections between stressors and their effects on valued system components. Now, these system components may or may not be ecological. Um, and, and in fact, the question that um, the tipping points team had earlier about ecological versus social or cultural tipping points is what this project is starting to get at is some of those connections and, and in particular quite targeting um, the cultural and social values. Um, so when possible we're trying to understand also the space and time scales that are associated with some of those things. Um, but it's, it's early stages still and a lot more work will need to be done on that. Um, Two major sets of, a cha of challenges have emerged from the research so far. These are largely political um, or institutional roadblocks of some kind or another, and reconciling knowledges and values. Um, in the political and institutional roadblocks category, you've got things like um, the jurisdictional boundary fragmentation, um, inertia, um, you know, short-term thinking and planning cycles, things like that. Um, and in the in the sort of reconciling knowledges and values category, you've got some challenges around conflicting rights and responsibilities, um, trying to connect the science and Mataranga knowledge across to policy implementation, um, and um, all kinds of issues around how we, how we deal with uncertainty. But there's been a lot of opportunities that have become clear as well. Um, some exciting things have emerged in particular related to the crucial role of Maori and indigenous sovereignty um, in navigating this space. Um, and I think that that was made really clear in some of the questions and themes that came out in our stakeholder and iwi discussion last night, that this is something that is it's not, um, it's, it's not just on our minds as researchers, but it's on everybody's minds how we're going to, how we're going to navigate that space. Um, the other things that have emerged are around a lot of support for systems-based approaches um, and a lot of expertise in those areas that just needs to be connected up a little bit more. Um, the idea that limit setting has a role to play within cumulative effects management, but it's got to be done very cleverly is something that's come across from a lot of people. Um, and that mixed approaches are going to be a part of, of what we need to do to roll this out. Um, finally, a lot of people have said the challenge has itself has been an opportunity for this discussion to emerge and that that needs to continue um, in phase two. And I think that that is pretty clearly the plan. So. The Aotearoa Cumulative Effects Framework, 
you guys are the first people that have seen it that are outside of the research team. Um, so basically, this provides a, um, a structure that will help to manage surprise and responses to surprise, or, or actually proactively dealing with surprise. Um, it's a multi-scale, multi-sector framework um, that can guide decision-making processes for cumulative effects management. Um, and it will bring together goals, um, the information that's needed and the information that's available, and set some parameters um, around how those things might be applied and where they might be, be applied. Um, it supports precautionary decision making, um, but the one thing that I think is a disappointment sometimes to the implementers is that it does not outline how to do a cumulative effects assessment. That is outside of the remit of the project, but it is something that we will provide some recommendations um, on around principles and things like that. Um, so this is the framework um, at its current in its current form. I, if it comes back to you looking like this at the end of June, this project will have failed. I have every expectation that this will change and and grow um, as we move forward with the testing process um, in December and and beyond that. Um, we think it's a good platform for some of the important discussions and negotiations that must occur if we're going to manage cumulative effects in a more strategic way. Um, if you picture this, those of you who were here yesterday and, and saw the uh, Wakatorua framework that was presented by Sean Awatere, um, this platform, this framework could be the platform that sits in between the two waka. Um, so it kind of provides that negotiated space, that space for negotiated discussion. It, it helps you think through how you would, what conversations you would need to have. Um, and the development of this framework has also benefited quite substantially from the work that's been done in the participatory processes team. So if you look at the um, poster we've got on the wall over here, you'll note that a lot of the questions are, are sort of similar or aligned um, from that work as well. Um, so essentially the work, this walks you through developing a collaborative vision and goal, and goal setting process, um, thinking about the information and the knowledges that you need to contribute to cumulative effects management, um, and then pushes you to think, what are we missing? What else needs to be included? What are the possibilities for us to do things differently? Um, and from there, it, the, the framework will push you then to actually action those things, um, develop a set of responses, collectively and, and learn from that process as well. So the framework um, is also designed to be sort of interconnected. Um, for those of you who are into resilience, this is a little bit of um, my version of a panarchy. Um, so it kind of operates interconnectedly across different scales. Um, so um, some of the answers to these questions will vary significantly by scale or by region, um, but essentially the overarching principles or guidance is, is likely to be shared across the scales and provide some cohesiveness. Um, so we're in the process now of populating this framework with the data we have from those focus groups um, so that we can draw the alignments across scales a little bit more clearly, so mapping those things across. Um, and that work will then be tested and, and I'm sure um, challenged at, in, in our December workshop, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, so from here, we've started to develop all this information into a report on cumulative effects management and governance in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, the report will build on and extend international work on cumulative effects um, frameworks that have emerged from uh, places like Canada, um, Europe, and Australia. But it will establish these for the first time in an Aotearoa New Zealand context. Um, the novel and innovative frameworks that are emerging from this collaborative work will be the first in the world to take such a multi-directional and multi-sectoral approach to cumulative effects management. Um, that kiutiki tai um, encompassing is, is something that's quite unique to this work. Um, and the research is revealing where values, knowledges, and especially practice across institutions may be aligned to create a more systematic approach to cumulative effects management. This type of really interconnected social ecological systems research is at the heart of EBM. And if New Zealand can get this right, we're going to be the world leaders in this space. Mamihinui. <laughs>